And then all you do is just put your drink down on the bar and you leave it alone. I'm not sure you expected that to happen and neither did I. So let's try and explain what's happening. Electric fields apply forces to charges. Why does putting two transparent things on top of each other do something so strange when you turn it through 90 degrees? Welcome back. And I've got another fun experiment for you today. What we're gonna look at is whether liquids can flow uphill. But first, a story. When I was about 10 years old, my dad bought the most wonderful present for myself and my brother. I think he bought it for himself, really. And that was an old grey Fergie tractor. And uh, we had great fun with this on the fields around our house. We needed it to move wood around and do lots of little jobs around the place. And it's probably responsible for me taking a real interest in engineering because uh, obviously it needed quite a bit of work getting it started and keeping it running. But what was interesting about the tractor was the fuel tank was actually right on top of the engine, just underneath the bonnet. Uh, that's quite a good design because it means it doesn't need a fuel pump. The fuel can just flow down straight into the carburetor and then into the engine. But the problem was uh, we didn't have a petrol station nearby and we couldn't drive it on the roads. So we used to buy petrol and bring it home in large uh, containers, large cans, much bigger than the ones you'd use for your car now. And we used to lift them up onto the tank right on top of the tractor. And then we'd have the problem of pouring the fuel out into the tank below. But my father, being the man that he was, um, a scientist, a doctor, said, well, I can teach you a way to do this. I can teach you how to make the petrol go uphill and then down into the tractor's tank. And he taught me how a siphon works. So there I was at the tender age of 10 learning how to siphon petrol. Of course, if you did that from someone else's car, it used to be done to steal petrol, it'd be very illegal. And most modern cars have uh, systems within the tank filler which stop you from using the method I'm just going to show you to siphon out the fuel and steal it. Also, um, the way we're going to do the siphoning involves um, sucking on the end of the pipe. So today we're going to siphon orange juice. So let's model our tank of petrol with some orange juice. So here's the tank that we filled up at the petrol station and took to the tractor and sat high up in the air. And here's the fuel tank of the tractor and it's lower down. But to get the petrol or orange juice into this tank, it's going to have to flow uphill. Now for the trick to get this started. And it's not very pleasant with petrol, but it's a bit easy with orange juice. You need to completely fill this pipe with the liquid that you're going to siphon. There's two ways of doing that. You can either put the pipe into the liquid and fill it like that, but I can't fit it inside uh, this uh, glass. So you just suck some through. Oh, orange juice everywhere there. Put your thumb on the end and then release it lower down. And there we go. You can see this one filling up and this orange juice must be flowing uphill to go all the way out of this one, up over the top and down into this glass. And it's rather fun to watch. It's almost all gone. And there we go. We've got a full tank of petrol, or if you're a bit naughty in the old days, you've managed to steal a whole tank of petrol. And you've probably got a mouthful in the process as well, so it serves you right. So, time for an explanation. And for the first time in all my videos, I'm not sure I've really got one. Physicists have argued for years and years about how this happens. And two of the sort of leading um, ways of trying to explain this is to say that the uh, molecules in here are sort of sticky with each other. In other words, there are forces between them. And if one molecule comes down this pipe, it kind of drags the next with it and the next with it. Um, quite a bit of research has been done um, to show that that possibly isn't the case. Um, it's a, they describe it like a bit of chain rolling off the edge of the desk and one link pulls the next. 
There are explanations that talk about pressure differences at this end and that end, and it's actually been done in a vacuum. So um, that can't be the answer. Um, so scientists have been looking long and hard to try and find out what is actually happening, and it may be a number of things. But what is for sure is, if this column of liquid falls, and you have to have that there first, then it will leave a space up here, it'll leave a little bit of a partial vacuum. And maybe it's that lower pressure that encourages this liquid to come up the pipe. So it's as if you've always got liquid falling down on this side, creating a lower pressure here, and therefore encouraging liquid up the other side. But if you Google it and look on the internet, scientists still argue about this very simple process. So, I hope you enjoyed the orange juice siphon. It's a great experiment. Why not try this one at home? You can use any piece of hose. It doesn't have to be see-through. And I'll be doing another experiment soon. I look forward to seeing you then. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I've now got to get this orange juice back home into this container with a tiny hole at the top. So, there we go. Siphon to the rescue.